Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Explaindio 3.0 getting started basic training video. If you have already created a video in Explaindio then this is not for you because this is for those people that may have some difficulty in getting started and just need to know where some things are and that is the purpose of this video but if you like to stay and uh, watch then that's cool too this video is also going to be cataloged indexed and then the table of contents will be added to it but that will be on my website so uh, I will get you'll get that information if you look in the comments of this video this is uh, explainio and this is the 3.026 version so when you bring explainio up this is what you see now what I like to do is point out a few things so that when you're in here you know where you're at because you're gonna see this screen or a screen similar to this for three steps before you actually get into the meat and potatoes of creating anything here in explain to you uh, what ends up happening is you have to create a project you name the project and then you have to create a scene once you create a scene You'll, be in, you'll still be in a screen that looks similar to this, only this bottom border won't be here. Now this is actually a holdover from Explainio 2 because none of this functionality uh, is, here, is here anymore. This goes away once you create a new project. So, and also for those of you that are getting the, um, the, the monthly libraries, see on this import button, you're getting zip files. Okay, so when you get to slide packs in the zip files, then you want to browse to a slide pack and come in here. All right, so let me just browse to one real quick. And go down here to the drive, monthly media, and I'm just going to pick uh, the kinetic typography. So you click on that. There is the zip file. Then you start the import. Now it says import complete. Okay, so also if you're adding true type fonts, if you want additional fonts in here, because it explained it comes with a set of fonts. Okay, but this is I'm making this in uh, October 22nd, so I imported. I also shared some uh, Halloween fonts out there in the file section of the main explainio board, and so they're all true type fonts. So you can come in here. You have to load them one at a time, but Here's how you would do it. You'd go out, browse to the folder where the true type font is, not the zip file, the actual font, not the zip, the actual true type font. Unzip it, put it in a folder, then you go out there and select the font at a time and bring it in. This is how you would do it, okay? So now that I have that in here, I still have not created a project or a scene yet. And you know that because you see this border, you see that this scene button is not highlighted okay and none of these other buttons are live they're grayed out so create a project okay hit create button all right now you see all the buttons are lit up so now we have an active project and you can see it right up here it says test project I just typed that in but we still don't have a scene to put anything in this is the timeline once a scene is created you'll get one track and from that point forward you can create additional tracks you have to have at least one scene before you can do anything so now we click on this plus button and we create a scene you do have the ability to save scenes so for example if you were creating uh, some real estate videos or some other genre and you start off the same way you just add different information all the time Well, you create the one scene and you save it so when you come back in you can just load it from here but right now we're going to create a brand new scene okay so now we are in an area called the canvas now the way you know that you're in the canvas is because you have these buttons down here at the bottom these are the buttons that allow you to create to add the different items uh, to explain to you in order for you to create your project 
You got the add audio button, add 3D object button. Which is, this is the ZF 3D objects you would bring in uh, either by using the converter that uh, Andrew sells for converting uh, FBX to ZF 3D. Or if you are lucky enough to have um, 3D Studio Max, then if you went out and got Flare 3D, which is the basic platform you use to make those graphics, then you could actually install the plugin and convert FBX to ZF 3D, and then you can do it that way too. Okay, this is the animation and slide. Those of you that know me out there know I create uh, slide templates and SWFs, mostly SWFs lately. So this is how you would load those here. This is where you would go to load a video. Here's where you would bring in your GIFs, your JPEGs, uh, and I guess um, PNGs, JPEG PNGs. I'm not sure if anybody does bitmap anymore, really, the BMP files. Uh, here's where all your sketch images are. Here's where you add text, and this is where you would close the canvas. Okay, so just as a quick example, we're going to create some text. All right, so you come in here. Here's the default text. Now, what you would notice about the text is that over here you have a dialog box where you can change the text color. You can select a font, font size, a uh, style if that font had one and a background effect so let's I like this font here so you can see there's the uh, style there and you can use this to adjust the size of the text or you can just pull on these handles here now you notice in that it's, it's resizing proportionally right but if you click on that now you can do anything you want with the text and change it in multiple different ways. Okay. So let's just start right here and keep it simple. Text size, text font family. Here's an effect if you wanted to put, now you really can't see this, but if you want to put a, a shadow under it, let me change the text color that way you can be able to see what I'm doing here there's red now if you put a dark bloom around it see it gives you that uh, kind of cloudy effect uh, some of the others are that's a strong shadow that's white see there's the black shadow it looks like about two points the next one I think is about four see and then you have the white counterparts under there now so we're going to keep this simple for now here's a paper button now with this with this these are the uh, background graphics these are 1920 by 1080 jpeg graphics that you can create and they are in the uh, in the folder in the programs directory or in your in your finder in the applications directory um, I just created a black because there was no black paper in there. All these are just light patterns. If you have 1920 by 1080 graphics, you can put them in here. If you don't use that size, then it won't fill the whole screen. So now once you put all your graphics out here, and we're just going to start with text, you can close the canvas. And what you will notice is, see out here you can't move it, only on the canvas. This is where you would preview your effect. Here is the timeline. As you add items here, they will stack up in this area. Now, if you wanted the text to sketch, here's where the effects are. So let's just add a simple sketch effect. Once you add the effect, then you can see it on the screen. If you need to move this text around, then looky here. Here's the open canvas button so you go back and here's where you could change the size or put it in a different location of the screen you close the canvas and there it is now I know I might be going kind of fast I'm trying to slow it down but I'm just trying to walk you through these things I will go back over some of the stuff so remember this is a basic training so I just want to get you up and running so you can make something so you can say oh that's cool 
All right, so now that you're out here in what I'm calling the preview area, in this text box here, you have a couple of things that will control your flow. Now, if you notice, when you click on this track here, it, it'll redraw. So it'll draw the text full, and then it adds the shadow, right? But if you want to draw an outline, you check this box here. And see, it draws in outline form. Now, it is possible that in outline form or in full draw mode, you can draw in a different color. And then when the drawing is done, it can appear in whatever this main text color is. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so when you're on a text field, you can click on the effects here. And see where it says overwrite sketch line color? Right now it's checked on black. So if I check this now, see it's drawing the character in black, but then it turns to red because red is your chosen text color. So let's just say if I change this to green, it starts drawing in black first, then now it's green. It works with outline. See it's drawing a black outline, but it fills it in green. So if I go over here and change this to red, it draws it in red, then it turns green. So I go back to the text and click on the draw fill text. See, it draws it in red, then it turns green. So baby steps, all right? So um, now what you can do, if you want, you can click on another effect. And I go to the animation presets, and this will allow you to fly the text out. Let's see, let's just pick one by random. See, there's your effects. Now, you don't always have to start this off with a sketch. You can create a different um, animation and have it slide in from the right. So, see how that's working? Your effects are here. Now, if you want to reorder the effects, see what I just did? I just put my mouse on it held my left button down and dragged up so here's what the effect order is now now if I hold my mouse button down and drag up see now I've changed the order of the effects okay so you say well I want the beginning to be longer but the ending to be shorter okay that's what these little balls are for so you can pull this out that will make the initial effect longer and if I shorten this, then, you know, the, the second one is shorter, right? Okay, so now you say, well, it comes in and goes out, doesn't give a person a chance to read it. Okay, well, wait, there's more. The pause after action. So what you can do here, you can add space. And let me open this again so you can see what I'm doing. See that space in between there now? So it comes out, it waits. Uh, these many seconds and remember that explain to you runs at 24 frames per second so this is 65 frames so this is a little bit over two seconds 2.7 seconds to be exact so you can tick this down if you need to to get it to where you really need it to be and there you have it and so you can stack effects here and do a lot lot of other things Okay, so now that's that's text. Okay, if you had loaded a slide, you'd have the ability to open up a slide and go in here and do something with it. So let's just do that now, because I know people have bought slides and say, okay, well, how do I use my slides? Now I know how to use text. I'm going to get rid of this for now. And if you want to remove something, now remember, we're in the preview area. So if I go back to the canvas, there's the text. What you need to understand is that when you create an effect, this is your landing position so if I put this out in the middle and you can't run any animations in the canvas remember the canvas is where the buttons are close the canvas and see that's basically the home position or whether the effect is going to render the text or graphic item okay 
All right, so we're going to go back to the canvas. We're going to get rid of this text, and you can get rid of the text in the preview area. Now, we're going to go to here where it says Add Animation and Slide. I spend most of my time here because I have SWFs that I load, but here are all your Explain to your templates. Now remember, I loaded the uh, kinetic typography, I believe. So here they are. Now my 1B for complaint is that this, this numbering here is um, a problem for me. I mean, I'd like to know, you know, tell me what this is. And you can actually go in and change the names of these if you like. So before I start here, let me go back in. So if I go to my explain to your directory and see I'm in Windows so under program files I'm gonna scroll down and here's explain to you see I got a bunch of versions I'm I'm a beta tester so you know and I have keep in separate folders so if I had to go backwards I can okay now here are here is the slides folder and by the way if you want to put some new paper in you go into canvas textures under paper and see there's all the paper right there and there's the black I created so you can rename these so you know what they are okay just so you know here's the slide folder now here's that kinetic typography folder I was just in right so let's just say that I want to change the name of this one to be I mean, I'm just making up a name on the on the fly okay so you can come in here review each one of these make some notes and come in and change them to suit you all right so now I'm gonna go back in here and load and explain the old template go back to the kinetic typography and see there it is right there typeset one I just renamed it this information here describes what this template does or contains so it lets you know that there's one video that you can use as the background and normally it will tell you about how many text fields and it looks like there's an image included and this is 750 by 500 image these are the components that are inside of this slide the text you're seeing here is text placeholder just to give you an idea of what the slide does so you can add single now you may have heard a rumor that it used to be in a, the ability to load all of these slides at once well that's gone you have to load them one at a time and that's there's a reason for that I'm not going to get into that today remember this is a basic training okay once that message goes away and you see this dialog box you should be able to load here's something you need to be uh, need to be aware of if you don't check this box when I click add this slide will be sketched now because there's nothing on the screen but this blue background there's really no need to sketch the color blue so generally what you're going to do is check this before you come out and only once you check this once it stays there is no preference where you can just start it this way but once you check this as don't sketch it should stay that way okay now you have full screen uh, explain the old slide load it up so close canvas and there is your slide now if you want to go in and see the inner workings you want to click on the slide button and click on customize this animation now here are the guts of the uh, explain the old slide please forgive the dinging in the background that's people on Facebook that are communicating with me and please forgive my ears here because this is my signature when I'm doing videos is my moose ears because I am in Anchorage Alaska so let's run this slide just to see what we got going on here all right it says description of the first image graphic and also notice when I run this slide it jumps me back out of the edit area so now I have to go back into customize this animation description of description of right here says the first see there's the first image or graphic image or graphic 
Now this text over here is the second set that pops up over on this side of the screen. So let me run this. See, there's the second. So if I came in here and changed this to, see, there it is, the second. See, I can let you know that I'm typing on that text. And I can just say, image or video. So that's how you would come in here and make changes. If you want to change the color of the text, there it is. You can also change the font if you so desire. Now if you notice there, because I changed the, the font, now it's bigger than the line that's behind it. So your choice would be to come in here and reduce it down to a font that fit. So let's see, we can go a little bit bigger. Let's try 35. Okay, looks like 40. Yeah, okay, well, I can probably do 45. Eh, nope, so 40 is my limit. All right, so you might want to say, well, let me center this on this block here, this rectangle. These are the offsets right here. So I know the Y offset is the up and down, the X is the left and right. So I believe, yeah, see, so I can just move that down, even it up some. If on this, the second, if I wanted to move it over, then I can just use this one over here. And the description of, well, you know, I can just move it up and down or whatever, just, just to show you how that works. All right, now, it looks like you can accept an image. So there's a background image, an image area one, and image area two. Dif disadvantage is that you don't know where those areas are or how they're interacting. So what I normally do when I come into a template, I'll fill up all the templates and then take a picture of it or take a screen snapshot and uh, create a catalog so I know what the template does. Or you can rename it in such a way that it gives you a hint Normally the, the notes inside of there that we saw when we were loading the template will tell you where these images are, but this one did not. So let's see. So let me get this picture. Well, it says background image, so let me put a background image in there. So okay, that lets you see. I was able to put a background image in. So if I run this from the beginning, see there's the background. Okay, so me see what ha what's happening with image one now when you hit the gallery button the gallery button is popping up SWS right now you could put real pictures in this folder and let's see if I still have my folder open so let me get out of the slides folder here's images and as you can see they match up to what's here if you want to put JPEGs or PNGs in this folder, you can, okay, because this is where they're located. So I'll just grab this guy right here. And while I'm at it, I'll just grab the girl and put her in the other. Because so now image one is the guy, image two is the girl, background image. So let's run this again and see what we have there she is and there he is and they're gone now one thing I've learned is that generally it's an either or you're either gonna have images or video sometimes the slides are designed to do both let's see so I'm gonna go down here into the videos and this set of videos here comes with explain to you three they're free when you download the program. It says 100 background HD videos. Um, right here it says MP4 and, and FLV, but when you're loading videos from the canvas, you can also load AVI and MOV. 
although the transparency is not respected so you won't see any um, any transparency if you load in the AVI or MOV with transparency in it but you can load the file so if that's not an issue for you then now we've had a big the reason this video is being recreated because um, there was a lot of people saying they wanted to see transparent uh, MOVs when Andrew, Andrew said that uh, would we like to see that and it's a resounding yes from multiple people out there I'm thinking we're up to 30 by now saying let's do it so let's play this side and see what we got okay so now see the video is on top of the images and it's running a little bit slow probably because it's buffering the video right now when normally when you render this out you don't have that problem and so if you wanted to render just this one scene you would do it by clicking on this button right here okay so to show you some other advantages of using this slide I need to get rid of this video because it's covering the whole screen so you want to get rid of the video click on remove okay now I'm going to do the same thing for the images the background image gotta go boom okay I'm gonna leave these other two images because those are the two characters right so in animation these are built-in animations generally each template if you're if the person who created the template is using the base explainio template that all developers get and that I sometimes use sometimes I don't uh, then these animations are in the background okay so you can select them by uh, choosing these this is supposed to be like a page turn hmm, pretty nice okay so number four. Oh, that's some rain so if I ran this the rain is behind them okay that's why I was trying to determine whether the rain was in front or behind so the rain is behind them the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane or behind the graphics okay let's see there's some snow we got snow yesterday here in Anchorage Alaska bah humbug and so it's only five of those there now the second set of animations are arrows so if you put a call to action down here or some other link or button that's what would do it for you so there's a couple different arrows or if this video was on top of a dialog box or or a, uh, a email box to capture name and email addresses then that's how you would work that so there seems to be quite a few arrows in here so it's ten arrows and five animations okay so there are certain people that they may want to um, put their own background in they may want to have the characters and animation but they don't want this blue background because their theme might be orange or or the uh, red and green for Christmas so you come in here to outline now you see all these multiple outlines some of this is those black bars that you saw under the text so let's rerun that Okay, so I'm going to stop here on this one now you notice that this is an SWF that is what I call free running so the template actually brought her out here and put her in this spot but she's actually maintaining her own animation within again that's for an advanced video I do have one when I did some videos on Explendio 2 if you look you go to YouTube and look up Alaska Borg or you look up a proslidepacks.com then you will see a series of video that talks about how these things are made and some other stuff okay so getting back in here to the customization now this one is normally the background this first one yep it's the background so you can turn the background on and off and now here's something else that's kinda weird this is a gradient background right you can change the color of the background but the minute you do that it's going to be flat so I'm going to show you what's going to happen here see now it's a flat background that gradient is gone now if you want the gradient background back you'd have to reload this slide in again and you cannot save what changes you've made if you reload it back in it's going to start from scratch so just know that 
Um, now, let's see. Which one of these? So it's going to be the last three then. Okay, so see. Now I can change the, the color of that thing. So I want to make that. Okay, well, it need to be a contrasting color. So there's blue. And here is uh, burgundy. And here is our purple. So I've changed those colors. So let me just run this a little bit more. Okay, so now I can go back in here and change the color of these. So let's make one yellow. And let's make this one orange. And I don't know what color this is. But that's how you change the colors. Or you can turn them off if you like. If you don't want the backgrounds, uh, just turn them off. If you wanted to move the backgrounds, let's see which one is that. That's this one. Let me just make it a more palatable color. Okay. Now you can do the same thing. First, you can you can uh, decrease the opacity. So you can fade them on out there if you want. And you can uh, scale them. So. And see, I've scaled it off screen some. So here's the offsets. So I know I can bring it over some. A little bit too much there. And I could bring it down. Then I would go back out and I'd move the text to match it. That way I can have longer text. So that's how that works. Now here's the orange. So let me fade her out a little bit. Okay. I will move it over first. Then I'll scale it up some and make it just a little bit wider. Now let me just move it back over, almost the same size. And I can push it down. Okay. You can see there, there's a priority in the layering. So that's, that's basically how the um, the outline works. Now this close button obviously gets you out of here if you want to get back to just the uh, the slide itself. Uh, here's the text button so these last three control this side of the screen and the first three here control the text on the first side. So let's rerun this baby here. Okay so see here's so you notice I've got rid of the F or changed it to a lowercase and added a space. So this is how you change that stuff. Here's the fonts for that. Word wrap means that if you if you type longer than the text field is based upon what the creator of this slide created, then the text will wrap. And that's why you have these offset buttons so you can move the text up and down. If you are a foreign language person, if you write in Arabic, Hebrew, and the other then you know you can make the text go backwards but you'd have to have a arabic font here inside in order to uh, take advantage of this but you know it's front and back so you do have some versatility in here okay so let me close and get out of here so this is a template so if you like I said, this background is green forever now. That, that blue is not going to come back unless I reload the template. So, boom, it's gone. Go open up the canvas, go back here, and it's in kinetic typography down here at the bottom. See, that don't sketch button is still there. And there it is, back again. Remember, this is the canvas area. How do you know you're in the canvas area? Because you have these buttons on the bottom of the screen. Can you run your animation in the canvas area? No, you cannot. Okay. So let's get out of here. And again, go in here and make the changes we just discussed. All right. Okay. So one of my specialties, well, let me just go in here. Let me just stay on one button for a second and get rid of this. 
what I like to do is create SWS and if you look in the file section at the top of the explain to your group you can see some of the uh, SWFs I've created I'm just came up with these things these are frames now notice that when the uh, slide template came in it came in full screen right but this graphic which is a 720 or a 1280 by 720 graphic comes in I guess what half size so what you do is you want to hit full screen proportional now what it, look what happens so it expands it proportionally now if I just said full screen well sometimes when you do that it, it will distort it if it was round it wouldn't be round anymore so see it has some animation you can put either a picture or a video in here now the problem is because it's against white you can't see it right so here's where paper comes in handy so I can put some black paper I don't have any well let me try this one right here this is see that's a nice little decent background okay so even though this is an SWF it still is controlled under the slide panel now there's no text so you don't see a text one through whatever because I created this with just an image and a video uh, field so you come under here and now you can see it says image one so if I browse to my images let's put the little doggy in there all right there's a little dog now you notice that he doesn't fit the whole thing right so what you can do is you can scale him up and because of how I've created this thing you see that now it's just a nice little frame but you say well you want to see his nose okay so move him up a little bit and that's how that works or you know if you want to stick a video in here Uh, let's try this one and videos do take a minute to uh, load up now with the uh, it is possible with the with the slide templates but people don't do it so much but with the SWFs like this there are other different effects different people have available uh, looks like the image is on top of the video so I need to go back over here remove the image now you see the video you can animate these things so all the animation controls are under here so let's just slide this in from the left and then once it's finished then the video starts now I could add another effect so that it can leave the screen from the right let me just do that so it comes in and the video is playing along with the animation from the frame and then when it gets to the end, it'll slide out. Well, I'm not going to make you wait that long. But I just wanted to show you that there, the animation does work on multiple elements. Okay, so let's get rid of this one. Go back out here. You can just straight up load a video. So, and you can sketch videos. So let's see. Um, let's try the piano. Now, if I don't check this box, it'll sketch the video. Then the video will start playing. If you don't want that to happen, then just check this box. But we're going to try it and see. So, click on add, and there is the is the uh, the piano. And again videos pictures all this other stuff comes in in what I'm calling half size right if I wanted this to be larger I could hit proportional see now that's keeping the aspect ratio of the picture and if I had to hit full screen see it stretches it I can go back to proportional but let me just make it smaller so the sketch won't take so long let me go out of here see, so it's actually drawing the piano and there it is so you do have the ability to sketch video and now what do, here's something that you need to consider it 
it sketches it and then it comes in right so now if you wanted it to leave with an effect because you can't have it slide in then sketch it has to sketch it, the first thing has to be sketching if you want that to happen otherwise sketching is not going to be available to you so let's hide it on the right so it sketches in it plays and then when it gets to the end it will slide out I'm not going to make you wait that long okay so now I'm going to leave the piano in here I don't have any animated GIFs. sorry the, the bit images you know that's just a picture so I have JPEGs So you can also sketch an image. You don't have to. So I'll just put this over here. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to go get a sketch image. Now these are S these are SVG images and you have a library of them. If you have your own SVG images, then you can put them right here in the SVG uh, folder so in the FEG folder your images have to be in a folder and then your images will be inside of there and the way you see the preview is because this is the SVG and this is a PNG as a thumbnail for your image okay so let me pick this one and you can resize it or whatever you want to do if I can grab onto it put it where you want okay now that's crazy isn't it so how do you control this stuff well look up here in the track and see this is the starting this is a starting line right here and was ever on top is going to be on top so the piano was the first one in that's why it's on top of this guy here so it's the piano then this graphic then, then this guy now if you wanted to have these things happen at different times you just simply slide it on over so i'm going to slide these two on over and then start up there so the piano is drawn and then while it's doing this thing you're going to have the picture drawn okay and then the guy is going to be drawn all right so now if you click on here this is only going to play the length of the items time so because this is a short time it's just going to play for the length of that picture and stop now if you want to see everything full length you can come over here to scene preview and pay attention to the warning down here because sometimes the scene preview may be slower than the actual video when it's produced um, and when you render it out, it does. It is pretty nice and fast. So, and you can make multiple scenes. Now, this is going to run until it comes to the end of this video. I'm not going to wait that long. And what I like to do is stop these things. So, now you get kind of an idea of coming out here and creating. So, you create a, I created some text for you, sketch image, bitmap. I don't have any animated GIFs, but it works the same as the uh, bitmap. Put a video out there for you. Showed you this, the uh, explained the slides and the SWFs. Okay. Um, not sure if I have any 3D objects. Oh, I guess there is a sample out here. Okay, I haven't played much with this interface. Because I normally do mine a different way, but let's see what what happens. Okay, there's the guy down there walking. So forgive me if this is not a good demo for the 3D. I'll have to get back with you on that one. 
and audio. Now, quite honestly, um, I don't have much experience with audio in here because I I host a radio show and do some other audio and use Pro Tools, uh, Sony Vegas for audio and auditions. So normally I'll create my videos and then bring it into a, a video editor and uh, strip audio there. So I'll have to get back to you on the audio portion of it. Uh, but there is this audio tool here on audio and then you can click on voice and record with your microphone and let's see if it'll hear what I'm doing testing one two nope it's not connected to the mic that I'm on right now because Camtasia has control over it but you can record with the mic here or load an audio file or you can click here for music and bring music in um, and those are a couple of ways that you can do it. And there are there is some music tracks here that you can add if you just wanted to add some music. Let's see if. Okay. Well, give me a beat. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's that's audio right there. So you can get more audio tracks if you need. Now, once you've created your video or you fill up your slide and you've done what you need to do and all you're going to do is make the one scene for now and you just want to render this out, you come up here to create video. Now, for me, the best settings is leave it on perfect, set this to stable, okay? And then you hit the start export button. That's going to put you into the explain to your export video folder. Now, if you're looking at the explain to your root, see that export video folder is right there. So, see, that's the one that's already in there. Okay. So, then you, it's going to take the name of the project, but you can rename it. And then render it on out. And you'll see right here. Now, as a I'm going to have to request uh, from Andrew and others that this initial text needs to be some other color okay because when it's finished it'll turn you will have a, a black background with white text on top of it but I don't know why they would have I mean some old eyes are not going to be able to see this stuff so let's see how long it's going to take I'm going to I'm going to stop the video until it gets close okay now you can see that it's getting close to the end. It's adding the additional frames. It's going to say um, export done. So this is where you're anticipating. Okay, now I've done all this work and made my first video or my hundredth video, and let's see what I got. Patience is a virtue here. Okay, so as you can see, export complete. Now, if you don't want to hunt for that folder, you can click right here. And it'll open up the video folder. Now, it really opened up off screen, so I'm going to close this box and bring it over. See, there's the um, My Test. See, Test Project is what I call this project, but I renamed it My Test. So, let's see what we got. take anyway yeah I forgot I left that music checked on but anyway as you can see everything worked need some I need, I need to, to hook Andrew up with some new beats man anyway uh, now I'm up to 50 minutes so far so I'm gonna quickly go through you got your first scene done you like that okay so you can click on this button and create a brand new scene and now now see the new scene is right here, but it's waiting for you to add an element. So if you add some text, now you can see that you have a new scene here. And this ask button means that it's, it's very short, so you need to add some time. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to change the font to my favorite font. Close this. And I'm going to go in here and add the sketch effect which will add some time to it and as it did as you can see it did add some time so now we have two scenes right 
So I'm going to run through this really quick. So over here on the scene tab, this scene tab controls each scene. You do have the ability to put a background video under the scene. So if you load a template and you don't like the background color or you want to have a video playing in the background, this is where you would add that, um, that background video. This here is after the scene. So this scene here, after it's done, I can set this to fade out, shift up, shift down, move around the whole nine yards, right? And then this scene, after it's done, I'm going to have it fade out. Okay, so it, now this is too long for me to show this as an example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scene preview this one. So it draws the text. And normally if it was a video, it would fade out. Since it's so short, you can render these scenes individually. So I'm going to just render this scene really quick. I'm just going to take the default scene name. It should only just be a second to let this render. Just to give you an example of some of the scene effects. And if you're interested in the effects, just create two short scenes and then render them out at the top up here. See, what I'm doing, I'm exporting a scene, not the whole project. Okay, so let's see what this little shorty looks like. So it's already, I already have my export folder. If you click on this button, normally your photo will pop up on your screen. But since I have two screens, it's popping up on the other one. So let me start it. That's basically how this stuff works. This is the basic. There are some other uh, options and tools and tricks that you can do up here. There's a presentation mode that I have to get into some other time. The wizard is a new feature that's still being developed, so I'm not going to go there just yet. Um, remember I said that if you want to export everything, it says export project. But if you're just wanting to export this scene, then it says export scene. This is how you know where you're at. And hopefully this will help you guys get started and everything else. And just feel free to experiment. You know, know that I'm only using text. And I brought this text in through the canvas. So I don't have any options to go to a slide because it's not a slide. It's just text from your canvas. So you click on the text button and you see that it's there. Now, if I had loaded, it, can I move some stuff over real quick for this demo? And maybe I just didn't move it correctly. So looks like I got a couple of issues I need to resolve. Now remember, you can go in here. Here's where you adjust all of that text. It doesn't look like you can add a background image. You can add a video. Let's see what the what happens with the video. Okay, the video is covering the whole screen, so let's run this. Okay, so it's got the piano in the background with the, with the slide stuff over it. Okay, that's interesting. So let me go back in here and get rid of this video. Remember that you have the animations and the outlines that control the background and everything else. And those black, um, these things here, they are controlled in, under the outlines. So let's see. That's the background. That's that one. That's that one. Okay. So these are other two that haven't popped up yet. So. That's how you control those and you can change their color so as well as the text color so if you went in back in here you can change the text color to let's change it to a red and let's change this into maybe a yellow see so anyway I'm at an hour point. I'm going to have to stop here. Hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, put them in the uh, group, and then I'll make another video to help you. Also know that Anthony and Charles and Ron and others out here that also have good information, 
Uh, you can also search for Pro Slide Packs in YouTube, and you'll see a slew of the videos I've already made for you. Most of those are version 2, but the concepts are pretty much the same. More uh, version 3 videos are coming up soon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this helps you get started with Explainio version 3.